In this video, I will explain how to code up deep learned filtered back projection for image reconstruction without using any training data at all. I'll be using PyTorch for this. And basically we have here in the top left corner, um, a true object, which I have forward projected here to get a sinogram. And this uh, video is all about starting from a sinogram and learning how to filter it using a convolutional neural network. Normally we'd use a ramp filter. I'm just showing here that we can use deep learning to learn the correct filter. So we're gonna apply this two dimensional convolutional neural network to the sinogram to filter it. Then we're gonna back project it to get our reconstructed image. So the basic um, computation graph, if you like, uh, for this process is as follows. There is our starting measured data. We're gonna learn the parameters for this convolutional neural network to give a filtered sinogram, which we're then gonna back project to give the reconstructed image. How do we train up the CNN? Well, the secret, of course, is the need to take that current reconstruction, forward project it to give a predicted sinogram, and then we're just gonna look at the mean square error between the starting data in the top left corner and our current prediction of the data based on our reconstruction. So this is the computational graph that we'll be coding up. We'll be taking the sinogram, applying a CNN to get a filtered sinogram to then back project and then forward project that image to get it to agree back again with the supplied data. So that's the code I'll be uh, talking you through now. Um, so let's make a start on that. Uh, maybe also just to motivate things, I will show uh, where we're going um, as well, just to show the animation of the training of that uh, deep learned uh, convolutional neural network for the filter. So this is just taking a few moments to load. Um, here in the top left will be the true image. There is the sinogram from that uh, true image or true object. And then what I'm doing is showing live here uh, the training of the CNN. The CNN is going from this sinogram to this filtered sinogram to then be back projected here to give this current update of the back projected image. And then what I'm doing is forward projecting that over here. And uh, as mentioned, I'm then gonna use the mean square error between the forward projection and uh, the, the measured data that we started with. And just for convenience here, I am visualizing the difference uh, between the forward projection and the original starting data. So this is the kind of different sinogram that is effectively squared and then summed up um, to define the so-called loss function for training up a convolutional neural network to do that filtering process. So that's where we're headed. Um, this will take uh, probably quite a few thousand epochs to deliver a decent reconstruction, but you can see the process is well underway at the moment. Uh, it's a bit blurred at present, but uh, what you'll end up with are the images that I showed earlier on, which are fairly good quality, um, just for this very simple proof of principle uh, approach to filtered back projection via deep learning. Okay, so I'll interrupt that and let's get on now with uh, the code. Okay, so I'm gonna start off then by uh, using the scikit image library. Um, I should say, by the way, I'm using um, the Atom editor, as you, as you can probably tell, and I'm using an Anaconda PowerShell here at the bottom. So that's why I've shown those icons there. Anyway, um, so scikit image library to import uh, that CT uh, brain. I'm just using slices from there. And of course, uh, we need uh, the well-known NumPy for basic operations in Python. We're also gonna be using uh, PyTorch, uh, the very useful deep learning framework. And uh, for visualization purposes, I'll be using uh, the OpenCV library. Now, I refer you to earlier videos where I've talked about my uh, display function, which I'll be using here very rapidly. Basically, we have a named window um, to this function that I'm defining here. We supply it with an image, positions um, for the window and a, a scale up factor for clarity of display. And then what I'm doing is just, just using imshow from CV2 for that named window. I'm just making um, the image larger according to the supplied scale factor, just normalizing it for display purposes and then moving the window to where I need it to be. So I've talked about that before in other videos. It's just for display of a window. Right, um, now to press on when with the, um, the learned filter back projection. First of all, then I'm gonna just define uh, the size of the image that I'm reconstructing. 
So here I'm going to use 128 by 128 pixels. This is the number of pixels in the X dimension and also in the Y dimension. And then I'm going to also define the number of azimuthal viewing angles in the sinogram. And I'm going to be using basically an approximation of root 2 um, times the number of pixels in the X and Y dimensions. Um, and then also for the number of pixels in the radial dimension, I'll, I'll match that. So we get a nice square um, sinogram just for simplicity in this um, implementation. Um, now, as you'll see, I have been displaying uh, images as I go along. And so I'm going to use a, a scale up factor of three just to make those images larger. That's what I'll be supplying uh, effectively to this function here when I display so as the images look larger on screen. Now, in an earlier video, I'll, I'll put a link, um, hopefully, in the top uh, corner of this uh, current video. I've talked at length about how to create a, a system matrix for forward and back projection in PyTorch. This is just a very simple uh, methodology. Um, I'm not claiming um, that this is anything particularly accurate. It's just a proof of principle to show you how to uh, implement these methods in PyTorch. So here I'm making a system matrix, um, basically a, as, a, as a torch tensor. And what I'm doing is stepping through all the different pixels in my image. And then I'm considering every single projection angle phi. And then I'm finding the projection of each and every pixel into each and every uh, projection angle. And I'm finding where it lands on the sinogram in order to basically build up a system matrix. And again, I'll refer you to the video that I would have linked uh, earlier in the top of this video. Um, I then store that in a system matrix. And this is just a very rapid way of doing a forward projection or indeed a back projection if we use the transpose um, for um, the, radon, the discrete radon transform or if you like uh, the discrete um, 2D X-ray transform. So I've talked about that before. I, I won't go further into that um, other than to say we're going to need to use it, of course, uh, for forward and back projection. And so I'm defining uh, functions here, forward project and back project. So the forward project takes an image, uh, uses the system matrix uh, defined there. And all it's going to do is basically take the system matrix, um, matrix vector, multiply that by an input image. Um, in order to give a sinogram. And um, so that's the forward projection. Uh, the back projection, there's the back projection. What that's going to do is apply the transpose of that system matrix to a sinogram in order to deliver uh, a, an image output. So I've talked about those before as well in another video, the one that hopefully you'd have seen a link to. Um, other key functions that we're going to quickly need uh, for this to all work nicely for display purposes um, between NumPy for display, um, using OpenCV and so on, as well as uh, using Torch tensors. What we're going to need to do is to be able to convert Torch tensors uh, to NumPy arrays. And so this I've talked about before as well. It's just uh, basically detaching, detaching the Torch tensor from the computational graph and making sure uh, it's on the CPU and converted to NumPy. And then we're also converting NumPy arrays to torch tensors with extra dimensions. And these extra dimensions are used uh, because the convolutional layers um, in the torch module, torch.nn uh, module, uh, needs um, to have uh, those extra dimensions, basically for batch, channel, and then spatial dimensions. OK, so uh, let's press on. Um, we've got to get that. Um, true object created. Um, so maybe to get moving with that, then what I'll do is I'll define that uh, brain image that we saw in the top left corner before. So brain image is equal to brain. That's just uh, taking us right back to the beginning from the scikit image library. And then I'm going to create a true object as a NumPy array. So I'm just going to take slice uh, number 10. Um, this counts from zero, of course. Slice number 10 from that uh, brain image, that CT. Just going to resize it, um, and the resize um, is a function uh, that we're going to use from again the scikit image library. Fairly uh, trivial, and I'm also using a rescale there, which appears in my display function. Okay, so this is just the, the true object um, nearest neighbor interpolation as it's resized to my chosen number of x and y 
pixels. Okay, um, right. So now let's um, actually take a look at uh, that. Um, let me see. So let me just uh, put this in here. That would display that true object, which is a NumPy array in the top left corner of my screen with uh, an increase in the size of the image just for display purposes. Um, so that's the true object. Maybe uh, what I could do now is uh, take a look at that to make sure that things are functioning as expected. Uh, make sure I've got no errors in my code so far. So I'll just uh, use uh, the CV2 uh, wait key uh, just to check that all is going as expected. So hopefully that should display. There it is. There is that uh, slice of the CT object um, in, the, in the top left corner. Okay, so it looks like we're in good shape at the moment. Let's uh, press on with the code. Right, what we're going to need to do then is um, use that system matrix uh, to forward project uh, the data. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll use the GPU on my laptop here. In fact, this is not a laptop that I'm working on remotely here. This is a, a workstation, so I'll be using the GPU. Um, and to do that, uh, let's carry on logically with the code here. Uh, what I'm going to do is find out if indeed I have a GPU available um, and so otherwise it will use a CPU. So this is just going to confirm that I've got access to a GPU uh, using CUDA of course. And then um, once I've um, checked for that I can then go ahead and call up uh, that function to make uh, the torch tensor which is going to hold that system matrix for forward and back projection. So I'm going to put that on the GPU. Okay, so that will take a little while uh, to run. Uh, there will be a slight delay on that when we run this each time. And so I guess for convenience, actually, just to speed this all up, I can easily change this value to something much smaller. And then we can maybe remember to put it back later on, just so as things run quickly uh, as we go through this demo. Right, um, okay, so maybe now would be a, a good opportunity uh, to check uh, that everything is looking correct. So I've got the true object, and now um, let's forward project that true object. So first of all then, to forward project it, I'm gonna be using that uh, torch tensor array, that, that, that large matrix that we saw earlier. And um, in order to use that, I've got to, of course, also have the true object, not as a NumPy array, but now I've got to convert it uh, to a torch tensor using that function I mentioned earlier. So the true object as a torch tensor is there. And once I've got the true object as a torch tensor, I can then forward project it using that function that I showed you earlier in order to get a true sinogram. Um, so the true sinogram that we'll be reconstructing from um, as a torch uh, tensor. Okay, so let's uh, take a look to make sure that that forward projection is working correctly, make sure I've not missed anything out. So I'll use my display function to look at the true sinogram. And what I'm gonna do is take that uh, sinogram, which is a, a torch tensor, and convert it back to a NumPy array so that I can display it. And then I'll be putting that in the next position on the screen. Um, and then once those, so the true should be displayed, the sinogram should be displayed. Let's check that um, that's functioning. Uh, this might be a slightly slower runtime. Uh, there we go. So um, the size is now much reduced just for speed purposes. I'll put it back later. Um, so what I'll do is also is uh, I'll double up or maybe not quite double. I'll just increase the display size here so we can actually see those more clearly on the screen. Okay, so there's the true object, now more crudely sampled into just uh, 64 by 64. And then this is the forward projected sinogram from that object. I'll, I'll improve the resolution later. Um, right. Okay, so let's uh, press on. Uh, basically, um, you know, this is a rather idealized uh, demo that I'm doing here, so I'll be using exactly the same system matrix in my reconstruction. Obviously, uh, we should Im uh, avoid uh, that, uh, normally speaking. And in fact, in reality, of course, the measured data would have been acquired from your scanner, 
and there's no way that your system matrix would be a perfect match for that. But here it is just for the sake of simplicity of the demo. So what we're, now, what we're now going to do is take this sinogram and train up a convolutional neural network to filter it such that when it's filtered and back projected, we get a reconstruction. How do we train up the parameters of the CNN? Well, we forward project our current reconstruction and get a sinogram that we want to agree with the sinogram that we started with. So in other words, the reconstruction should be consistent with the data. That's where we're headed. Okay, so let's uh, continue to press on then. Um, so uh, to do the filtering, I'm gonna use a convolutional neural network. And for that, I'm just gonna uh, set up a class um, in PyTorch. Uh, using uh, the torch.nn module. So remember the torch.nn uh, module was already imported at the start there. So um, I've covered CNNs in other videos, but here it is in just hopefully one screen so it fits on nicely. There we go, it's all just on one page here for clarity. So I've just got this uh, convolutional neural network class um, it's uh, making use, of course, of the torch.nn uh, module and has to uh, initialize um, from, from that uh, torch.nn uh, module. And then um, finally, we get to uh, exploit that nn module to set up a, a, a sequence of convolutional layers. And what I'm using here are conv2d uh, convolutional um, layers um, using two dimensional kernels of size here three by three and i've got zero no in fact i've got reflective padding at the edges the reason i'm doing that is that um I, I want i don't want any edge problems at the top and bottom of my sinogram when i go to the viewing angles so I, I found it better to do a padding mode of reflect when i'm doing my convolutions but anyway it's only a very small padding um, because i'm only using three by three kernels uh, but just to talk you through this, we've got a convolutional layer with one single input because it's one sinogram going in. And then what I'm going to do when I initialize um, this um, object, basically, when, obviously when I instantiate the class as an object, I'm going to supply it with a number of required channels. And so that just gives me a control over the complexity of this CNN. Um, so whatever number of channels I specify uh, will correspond to the number of kernels that are being used. And of course, the number of kernels in the convolutional layer will determine how many output channels or how many output feature maps I get from that convolutional layer. Um, and then I'm using, this is gonna have a, a bias as well that can be learned. And then I'm gonna run it through the parametric uh, ReLU, which is basically uh, passes through all positive values unchanged, but can uh, scale down or diminish uh, the negative values without quite setting them to zero, which is what a regular ReLU would do. Okay, um, so basically I'm just going through all of those convolutional layers. Um, you know, I've you know, Lots of experimentation is possible here. I'm just doing a, an example of a certain depth and a certain number of layers here. But crucially, when I get to the very end, I've still got that number of channels as the number of feature maps produced from the last convolutional layer. And what I'm going to require is to only have one kernel with that many channels in order to deliver one single image output, which of course will be my filtered sinogram, what we've been seeing earlier. Okay, um, so that's pretty much all there is to the CNN. Um, when I'm uh, using uh, the method, the forward method for this uh, CNN um, class, what I'm going to be doing is taking just merely X, that's the input sinogram, um, because I want to keep that as a 2D array, because sinograms are a 2D tensor, if you like, uh, because they're 2D arrays, I'm going to need to unsqueeze it uh, with, to supply the extra two dimensions that are required uh, by the convolutional, uh, the conv2D um, layers here in the torch NN module. That's just what it needs. Um, so I unsqueeze it to create those extra dimensions then I can finally run it through um, my convolutional neural network. And then when I've done that, um, the output will still be 4D as well. So I'm gonna squeeze those two dimensions uh, back to just get a, a two dimensional torch tensor in the output. So that's why I'm doing that in that stage there. Right, okay, um, so that should all 
hopefully be functioning fine. So let's now go ahead and instantiate that class. Let's create uh, an object here. Um, so what I'm going to do is use 32 uh, channels. That means I'll be using 32 feature maps in between uh, all of those convolutional layers. And I'm going to put it on the GPU. And I'm going to call that uh, the CNN object, if you like, an instantiation of the class. Right. Um, so now uh, we need to actually go ahead and uh, make um, our filtered back projection computational graph. OK, so this is going to follow the kind of format that we've uh, seen before in other videos. But again, I will talk you uh, through this. OK, so let's get this copied across here. So I've got a filtered back projection uh, network using co a convolutional neural network as the filter. And so again, we're making use of the torch.nn module. As always, they've done a lot of hard work. We don't have to reproduce that. Um, now, when I um, initialize um, this, this uh, class, this object, um, what I'm going to be doing is um, taking in um, the sinogram that I plan to reconstruct, as well as the CNN that I'm going to be using uh, for the purposes of filtering uh, that sinogram. And of course, we'll be learning the parameters. Um, so um, what I'm going to be doing to help the process, I'll talk about it in a moment, is first of all, I'll create a, a sinogram filled with ones. And the reason for that is that I'd like to back project a sinogram filled with ones in order to get a nice normalization sensitivity image. This is just going to help the filtered back projection, help the scaling of the problem. OK, so I can explain more as I put those lines up. Um, also, of course, uh, we need to um, get a hold of the, the, the actual CNN that's been instantiated earlier on. And also, I'm going to be adding on a parametric ReLU at the end just to um, reduce any negative values in the final output. Here, I'll be uh, you know, steering towards more positive valued reconstructed images. OK, so that's the initialization of this, um, this class here, this uh, filter back projection CNN network. And then crucially, we're going to need uh, the forward method um, associated with this class. Um, OK, and so the forward uh, method, which will be called up uh, by by PyTorch, basically, it, what it's going to do is take uh, the sinogram that we want to reconstruct and then look how simple this is. We're just going to take that sinogram that we want to reconstruct from, just run it through the convolutional neural network that we specified earlier in order to deliver a filtered sinogram. Once I've filtered the sinogram, I'm going to get a reconstructed image. How do I get the reconstructed image? I just back project the filtered sinogram using my system matrix. And of course here, all the usual dimensions that I mentioned earlier. Now this is the little extra add-in that I've got just to help the process along. That when I do my back projection, I'm gonna normalize, I'm gonna divide by the sensitivity, sensitivity image, which is just a back projection of ones. It's like a transpose one that we use um, in iterative methods like MLEM. Here I'm just using it so that um, the CNN can just uh, focus, um, can just be operating in a, in a convenient scale, basically. Um, then once I've done that back projection of the filtered sinogram with a little normalization here, um, I'm going to impose or drive it towards a more positive solution by trying to learn um, how to diminish any negative values that might result. So that's parametric ReLU. Um, and then, um, now this would be interesting, I'll talk about it later, we could uh, leave things there and just train up the CNN to get the reconstruction to match a high quality reference. And of course, that's what is often done in deep learning. Here though, I'm going to not have any training data at all. I'm just going to say, well, okay, I require the forward projection of that reconstruction um, to match what I started with. Okay, so just learn the CNN such that the sinogram for reconstruction matches the forward projection of my reconstructed image. So a very simple approach, no training data involved, just using deep learning to learn how to filter a sinogram. That's all we're doing here. OK, um, then I've got all my usual uh, display functions um, so as we can see what is going on as we work here. So here I've got the filtered sinogram. All I'm doing is showing the filtered sinogram. The filter back projection reconstruction, just showing the reconstructed image. 
the forward projection of that um, is here. And that's going to be quite crucial because I'm going to be using that in my loss function, my mean square error loss function to train up the CNN. OK, and also for convenience of display, I'm just going to look at the difference between my forward projection and the original supplied sinogram that I'm reconstructing from. And that forward method then will be returning my filtered back projection reconstruction because that's what we're interested in. But also for the purposes of the loss function, it's going to be uh, returning the forward projection of that reconstructed image. OK, so that's uh, pretty much it for our filtered back projection uh, network. Um, now um, it just remains to instantiate um, that class to create the object that is our filter back projection network, uh, put it on the GPU, um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get that moving along then. So, okay, so here is my filter back projection network uh, object, and what it is is just an instantiation of this class that we've just gone through here. And of course, I need to supply the initialization to that, which is the CNN that I want to use, that I want to train up for the filtering, as well as I'm just giving it the sinogram so as it can figure out the correct dimensions to get that sinogram of ones to back project to give that uh, sensitivity image, the normalization, just to help it along. OK, so that's why I'm supplying uh, the true sinogram as well as my CNN object. Okay, uh, now uh, we've got to train up that uh, CNN. So uh, this should be a, a familiar process. And um, let's just uh, get that underway here. Just a few more lines of code to go and then we we're, we're, should hopefully be up and running. Okay, so um, that should be commented there. So this is training of the network, the computational graph. So we're going to define a loss function, as mentioned earlier. This is the mean square error loss function. I'm going to use the Adam optimizer. Of course, there are many possibilities out there. I'm going to use a very modest, uh, small learning rate here. And of course, I'm specifying that I want to optimize the parameters of the uh, computational graph, um, which is my, my network here that I've instantiated from this class. OK, um, I'll also take a note of the training loss uh, values as we go along. I'm going to do, <laughs> just picking here, a very large number of epochs. Um, it will take quite a few to run. I'm sure there are much improved versions of um, this method here. Um, but um, I'm just going through, again, a demo for proof of principle here. OK, so we're going to set up a for loop um, to go over, for example, 60,000 epochs. And what I'm going to be doing then is using that uh, filter back projection network. I'm going to supply it with the sinogram that we want to filter and back project. Um, and of course, it also supply the forward projection of the reconstruction. Why is that? Well, it supplies not just the reconstruction, but it also supplies the forward projection because we're going to use that forward projection um, to be compared with the true sinogram. In other words, the sinogram that we're reconstructing from. So whilst this is called true sinogram, of course, it could be your measured sinogram. OK, so measured sinogram goes through the network. We get a reconstruction. We also get a forward projection of our reconstruction, which is then that forward projection of the reconstruction is then compared with our measured data. And that's compared using a mean square error. Uh, and that defines our loss function or in reconstruction terminology, that would be the objective function. Now, as an aside here, um, quite a crucial aside, actually, um, I'm put, going to put in a comment here, which is that, of course, um, we could just take the reconstructed image and require um, the loss function to say, well, look at the reconstructed image and compare it with the actual true object. But of course, when we just have sinogram data, we don't have the true object. So this line would not be possible. But much of deep learning does require existence of the label or the true target, the uh, the ground truth reference, the high quality image, whatever you want to call it. And so if you do have access to that, then you could obviously do uh, the training um, such that that data has um, such that the reconstruction matches that uh, high quality reference. And of course, that could have um, denoising advantages and all kinds of benefits um, from requiring that. But here we're just learning how to reconstruct only. 
Right, uh, very nearly there now, so well done for coming this far. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is, um, once we've evaluated that loss, I'm just going to add that to my list of loss values here to track as we're going. Then we're going to find uh, the gradients of that mean square error loss, um, basically taking the, the gradient of the loss function with respect to all of the parameters in the computational graph. In other words, um, that's the CNN. That's the only one with trainable parameters in this computational graph. Um, once we've got the gradients, uh, we can then do a, a, an update. That's like a gradient descent update. So in other words, basically, if it, if it were just gradient descent, that means we'd be uh, subtracting some learning rate times the gradient. But here we're using a bit more of a more advanced optimizer. We're using Adam here. Uh, but nonetheless, we take the step um, in accordance with the gradients that we've just found. And then before we go around into another epoch, uh, we need to set those gradients to zero uh, to then restart uh, the process again. Right, um, now what I'm going to do is just uh, merely uh, report what epoch it is and what the training loss is. And then I think we are done. Uh, let's make sure I've not made any mistakes here. Let's check that by actually running the code I've just uh, written here. There's the true object. Uh, there's its sinogram, and hopefully now, let's see, it's taking a, a few moments. Um, what I'm expecting to see oh, okay, I know what the reason is. Um, it's obvious. The reason that's not moving forward is because I left uh, a wait key back here. We don't need that anymore. So let's go again. Okay, so we'll get the true object, um, the sinogram, and then hopefully now we should see our hard work. There we go. So we're learning a CNN to go from this to this sinogram. This is the filtered sinogram. We're then back projecting it to get a reconstruction here. This reconstruction is getting forward projected into the top right corner. And then what I'm doing is taking the difference uh, between the forward projection and the actual measured sinogram, and I'm showing that here. And then the loss function effectively is taking the square of all of the pixels in that difference um, and taking the mean of the square error, basically. And that's the loss function. And then, of course, we take uh, the gradient of the loss function with respect to the parameters. That's what PyTorch, the torch modules, do all that hard work for us. It does all the um, automatic uh, differentiation that's needed. Um, in order to update the parameters of the CNN, you've got to imagine it's sitting here, which is uh, going from the measured data to um, the filtered version of the measured sinogram data. Okay, so that is running. Um, so we'll just let that develop a bit more. Um, it's now successfully moving forward. And maybe I'll just uh, finish with just a, a reminder of the overall process just as we can let that run as well while we're doing this reminder. So this is what we've just been doing. Okay, so there is the true sinogram. We've been training up the parameters for this convolutional neural network to get a filtered sinogram, back projecting it to get this reconstructed image, which we then forward project to get, uh, that's the FP sino that you've been seeing in the, in the code just now. And then we've been using a mean square error loss function um, in order to figure out how to update the parameters of all of those convolutional kernels in all the convolutional layers of that CNN, such that it does a better job of filtering that sinogram, such that when it back projects, we get a reconstruction, which when forward projected is consistent with the data. So um, let's uh, take a look. Um, so this will take um, a fair few um, training epochs to run. Um, but meanwhile, um, I hope that's been useful. And in fact, maybe what I should do, remember this is quite a low resolution example here, maybe uh, to prove a point, I should just be running it at the higher resolution as at the start of uh, the video. And to do that, of course, I could just go back here, go to 128, and um, I think I had that at something like three. Uh, trouble is that will be even slower to train now, but uh, will be a nice higher quality uh, reconstruction. Now, of course, um, it'll take a little bit longer to make that uh, torch system matrix. All these for loops, by the way, are only in creating 
uh, that system matrix, which is then stored as a torch tensor. So the forward back projection is very fast. Uh, it's only the, the computation of that uh, system matrix that's quite slow. Right, there we go. Now it's a much higher quality uh, reconstruction that we're seeing. Um, so hopefully um, that's consistent now with the start of the video. There's the true object, there's the sinogram, filtering, back project, um, forward project, difference, and so on. We've gone through all that in detail now. So I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much for listening.